Korea was a member of the Japanese Empire in the beginning of the 20th century. However, after World War II, the USSR and US were given a trusteeship of the peninsula. In August 1945, the two nations agreed to divide the country along the 38th parallel, enabling the USSR to influence the north while the United States had an influence on the southern half. In 1948, the two nations were supposed to help organize an election that would unify Korea once again but the USSR and US could not agree and did not trust each other. As a result, on May 10, 1948, South Korea had its first democratic election appointing Syng Min Rhee as the first president. In North Korea, the USSR established Kim Jong-sung, the leader of the North in September. Song became greatly admired in the North. Statues were dedicated to him and he became known as the Great Leader. As time went on, hostilities between the borders increased. In 1950, Sung decided he wanted to reunify Korea. On June 25, 1950, he invaded the South, commencing the three-year-long Korean War. In July 1950, the United States entered the war to defend South Korea, with the objective of ending the expansion of communism. Finally, in July 1953, the war ended and Korea remained divided. A permanent peace treaty was never signed after the war. Thus, Korea re-established the division between the North and the South along the 38th parallel as it was before the war. The North adopted a communist government like the USSR, while the South employed a nationalistic government. Initially, South Korea's economy suffered. However, after adopting a democratic government with a market economy, the country flourished. North Korea, in contrast, experienced slow economic growth in the 1950s. After the Soviet Union support recoiled and devastating natural disasters occurred, the North Korean economy nearly collapsed in the 1990s. When I was young, I thought my country was the best on the planet. And I grew up singing a song called Nothing to Envy. And I was very proud. In school, we spent a lot of time studying the history of Kim Il Sung, but we never learned much about the outside world, except that America, South Korea, Japan are the enemies. Although I often wondered about the outside world, I thought I would spend the entire my life in North Korea until everything suddenly changed. When I was seven years old, I saw my first public execution. But I thought my life in North Korea was normal. After North Korea became a communist country, all of its citizens were forced to live in a highly censored nation in which everything they do and see is controlled by the government. When traveling, they are subject to checkpoints throughout the country. At each of these checkpoints, government officials record where each car is traveling to, for what purpose, and how long they intend to be at each location. This allows the government to ensure that all citizens are not trying to leave the country as refugees. In addition, the regime owns all of its domestic news outlets in the country so they are able to control and limit the flow of information. For example, radio and television sets in North Korea are given to households and pre-tuned to government stations, and radios must also be checked by and registered with the police. The use of the internet is extremely limited to elites and academics and even those resources are restricted to what the regime believes is suitable. Furthermore, restrictions are also placed on academics and arts within the state. Ideological education takes precedent over more academic education, and all curricula, plays, movies, and operas center on improving the reputation of the Kim family, which is the only source of ideology in North Korea. Although there are many forms of censorship of the media placed on the people of North Korea, they also experience many limitations on medical help that limit the citizens of North Korea. While the economic levels in the country are very low, they also affect the medical resources available. Many times the available hospitals lack appropriate equipment, supplies, electrical power, and proper trained staff. This inability to provide for its people has caused common problems such as blindness and malnourishment among all ages. Lastly, the citizens of North Korea are constantly in a state of fear due to the pressure the regime places on them. 
If a citizen is caught convicting crime against the regime, oftentimes they are subject to inhumane torture such as beatings, rape, enslavement in prison camps, and public executions. Carter has personal experience dealing with North Korea. On a 1994 trip, he crossed the border into Pyongyang to meet with the then North Korean leader Kim Il-sung. President James Carter was born in Plains, Georgia on October 1, 1924. Growing up in such a rural, sparsely populated region, Carter spent most days assisting his father on their farm or listening to current sporting t statistics and politics. Despite the strong adherence to racial segregation in his home state, he continued to promote integration and disregard the barriers created by Southern authority. After high school, Carter studied engineering at Georgia Southwestern Junior College and later he joined the Naval ROTC program to continue his engineering studies at the Georgia Institute of Technology. He then applied to the Naval Academy in Annapolis, Maryland, which accepted him to begin his studies in the summer of 1943. Upon finishing his studies in the Navy, Carter returned to the family farm in Georgia and became active in community politics. He won a seat on the Sumter County Board of Education in 1955 and eventually became its chairman. However, during the 1950s, the South was experiencing a time of great change and controversy. Carter took his place as the one and only white desegregationist in Southern politics at the time. As he eventually gained the position of governor, he promoted an end to segregation, increased the number of black officials in the state government by 25%, and promoted education and prison reform. As the time drew near for the 1976 election to commence, Carter was able to secure the Democratic nomination and he later became the 39th President of the United States. His presidency is most noted for the significant foreign policies and relations formed by his administration. Although Carter gained little recognition throughout his one-term presidency, he gained notability through his diplomatic relations subsequent to his presidency. In 1994, following his presidency, Carter took notice to the upcoming brink of war between South Korea, whose ally was the United States, and North Korea. Suspicions had grown amongst the United States that North Korea was developing the use of nuclear weapons. Aware that there are no diplomatic relations amongst these nations, ex-President Carter and his wife went as private citizens re representing the Carter Center to meet with North Korea's President Kim Jong-sung in Pyongyang. With thorough negotiation, North Korea agreed to end its nuclear development program in exchange for ongoing dialogue with the United States, dialogue in which had not been used at all for 40 years prior. These efforts have affected the strengthening of peace along the Korean Peninsula for many years, and the Carter Center continues to flourish as it works to prevent and resolve conflicts, foreign and domestic, through dialogue and determination. And we were well on the way toward a peace treaty with North Korea. When, when President Bush came into office, though, that entire process was undone. In, her, in his inaugural address, uh, President Bush declared that uh, North Korea was an axis of evil. And to make a long story short, North Korea began to reprocess the nuclear fuel rods, and now they got six or seven capable nuclear explosives. So back in July, the North Koreans asked me to come over again because they wanted to deliver a message to the U.S. government. Mm -hmm.